Hi, I'm Katherine Allen from Interpret America, and this is Interpretips, where we answer your questions about the interpreting profession. Today's question involves a difficult situation interpreting in a mental health setting. A viewer recently interpreted for a patient in a program that required group therapy. The patient was the only participant who needed an interpreter. Everyone else spoke English. The interpreter was sitting at a table of four next to the patient, and throughout the session, the patient consistently indicated his unwillingness to participate with very clear verbal and body language. Every time the interpreter started to interpret, the patient became agitated and communicated that he did not want to be there nor talk about his personal issues. The nurse leading the session asked direct questions of all the other patients, but ignored the non-English speaking patient and did not address his distress. So our viewer asks, what is the best course of action for the interpreter in this case? This is a very common situation for interpreters, but made particularly complicated by the group setting and the dynamics of group therapy in this situation. In general, the patient's response is not the interpreter's responsibility. He interpreted correctly. The nurse is the one responsible for managing the situation, and it sounds as though she did not do that. So knowing that doesn't really help you when you're in the middle of a difficult experience. Let's look at our ethical requirements to provide some initial guidance. The pr principle of accuracy in the National Codes of Ethics for interpreters in healthcare requires interpreters to interpret everything that is said. In this situation, the interpreter may need to be assertive in making sure the interpretation is heard, including raising a hand to get the nurse's attention to relay what was said. Our ethical principles of impartiality, role boundaries, respect, and professionalism also tell us that it is up to the nurse and the patient to manage the situation between them. Again, it is the nurse's responsibility to notice and manage the patient's agitation and potential distress, not the interpreter's. But let's say you interpreted everything and the nurse still did not respond. What then? So we have three possible strategies for you. You can continue interpreting, you can intervene, or you could choose to withdraw from the session. If you are able to continue interpreting, that is ideal and that is the first best option to choose. The next level would be to intervene with the nurse to get the pause you need to interpret what the patient has been saying. However, if you feel that patient's health, dignity, well-being, or safety is at risk by just interpreting and simple interventions may not work, in those circumstances, you are permitted in the NCIHC Code of Ethics, not the legal code, to advocate. This means you are stepping out of your role as the interpreter, which can cause serious problems for you and everyone involved. So take this step only if absolutely necessary. If you choose to advocate, follow these three steps. Decide why you want to advocate. Decide if the patient's health, safety, well-being, or human dignity is at serious risk. And if so, decide if the need is imminent or not. Do you have to intervene right now? or can you wait? If possible, wait until after the session and file a report with the appropriate supervisor, in this case, either to the agency that sent you, so they can speak to the hospital, or to the appropriate person at the hospital if the hospital engaged you directly. If nothing else works during, during the session, your absolutely last choice is to withdraw. Why? Because ethically, under the principle of accuracy, impartiality, and role boundaries, the interpreter is responsible for making sure he or she has the right conditions to interpret. If you can't interpret, you can't do your job. This is a very, very serious step, but it can sometimes communicate your message where all else fails, and if done with sensitivity, professionalism, and tact, might even be successful. But it's tough. We do not pretend it would be an easy thing to do. This is one of those situations that really doesn't have one single correct answer. It requires the interpreter to have a solid grasp of the ethics at play and a good decision-making process. Interpreters need to evaluate difficult situations by asking themselves which ethical requirements apply, assessing the consequence of possible actions, making a decision, and then evaluating the outcome. Phew, this was a complicated one, but we hope these answers provide some help 
and we'll see you soon for the next Interpretips.